The Irish Wolfhound, or Cú Fáil, is an endearing symbol of Ireland's ancient Celtic traditions. The Gaels marveled at the huge size, ferocity and speed of wolf dogs as the hunting companions of kings and nobles. Poets celebrated the fearless hounds of Finn Mac Cumhale and the legendary heroes of Erin. Irish wolfhounds are the oldest breed of dog in Ireland although their origins are obscure. Scholars agree the ancestors of Irish wolfhounds were probably Celtic hounds. The Celts and their enormous dogs arrived on the shores of Erin during their westward migration in the 5th century BC. The Roman poet Silius Italicus noted the Belgi tribes in Ireland imported enormous greyhounds from Gaul during the 1st century BC. The Belgi tribes settled in Ireland between the 2nd and 1st centuries BC. Strabo recounted the Gauls trained their Canis Gallicus, or war hounds, to attack warriors on horseback during battles. Some wore chain mail and collars with iron spikes. Others guarded their forts and settlements. The Greek historian, Arian, wrote of the Gallicus Vertragus, or Celtic hound of Gaul in the 2nd century AD. He described the Vertragi as a tall greyhound with a rough coat. The swift-footed Vertragi differed from other breeds of dogs because they hunted by sight rather than smell. Irish wolfhounds emerged from the interbreeding of Celtic hounds with the dogs or tamed wolves of Erin. Gaelic kings and chieftains followed the Celtic tradition of employing sag clium, or large hounds for warfare. The Irish nobility used their war dogs to create a new breed of hunting dog in the 1st century BC. They called the hounds the coo fowl, or wolf dogs. Pliny remarked the Canis Graeus Hibernicus, or Irish wolf dog, resembled a huge greyhound with a shaggy coat. Wolf dogs were also known as Irish greyhounds, Irish deerhounds, and Celtic greyhounds. The hunting fraternity used wolfhounds to pursue large game animals such as stags, wolves, and Irish elks on horseback. Poets celebrated the great hounds of Erin in Irish lore. The Ulster Cycle told of the value placed on the Cunna, or war dogs, in Gaelic culture. Queen Mebd of Connaught and Conchobar Mac Nessa, king of Ulster, coveted a ferocious wolfhound called Aelby. Aelby was the magnificent wolf dog of Mesroda Mac Datho, king of Leinster. Irish poets recounted all Ireland was full of the fame of that hound, and every one desired to have it. Aelby was so fierce that it could defend the kingdom of Leinster against its enemies better than any army. The wolf dog was so extraordinarily strong and swift that it could run round Leinster in a day. Sadly, Aelby died during a battle between the warriors of Connaught and Ulster. His huge jaws clamped down on the wheel of the chariot carrying the king of Connaught and remained there after he was beheaded. Aelby's head eventually fell from the chariot at Far Bill, or ADH Sin Chan, meaning Hound's Head Ford in County Westmeath. Luff, the Celtic god of light and crafts owned a gigantic war dog called Phalinus. Phalinus was invincible in battle. He could catch and slay any beast in the world. The magical hound also possessed the power to transform water into wine. The Romans referred to Irish wolfhounds as Scottisci canes, meaning Scotty dogs. They admired the strength, intelligence, speed and agility of wolfhounds as hunting dogs. The Gaels traded gold, slaves and wolfhounds with Roman merchants in Britain and Europe during the 1st century BC. The Roman consul, Quintus Aurelius Symmachus, wrote the earliest account of Irish wolfhounds in 391 AD. Symmachus thanked his brother, Flavianus, for sending seven Irish hounds to Rome in cages. He declared, all Rome viewed them with wonder. The Lydney dog was a statue of an Irish wolfhound that adorned the Temple of Nodens in Gloucestershire in the 4th century AD. 
Pilgrims visiting the sanctuary esteemed the Lydney dog as a sacred object of Nodens, the Celtic god of healing, the sea and hunting. Scholars believe the numerous depictions of dogs at the temple were representations of Nodens. The priests kept hounds at the sanctuary to invoke the divine power of Nodens during healing rituals. The Irish god, Nuada, was another incarnation of Nodens. His cult flourished at Manuth, or Make Nuada, meaning the plain of Nuada in County Kildare. The wolfhounds found at the great royal ceremonial sites in Ireland revealed their intimate connection with kingship, the deities, and the underworld. The Madrai, meaning dogs, enjoyed an elevated status in Celtic society because they could sense unearthly beings in the mortal realm. Their ability to communicate with the spirit realm was a sign they protected the souls during their passage to the netherworld. The origins of the ancient ceremonial sites of Ireland lay in the custom of burying tribal chieftains near the hallowed entrances of caves. The Killarag Cave in County Limerick is the oldest cave in Ireland. The cavern is the final resting place of a large hound dating to the Mesolithic era. Scholars believe a group of nomadic hunter-gatherers stopped at the cave during their trips along the river Mulkier. They performed rituals in the cavern between the Mesolithic period and Bronze Age. The human remains and grave goods in the Killarag cave suggested the rituals were connected to the Thonic deities, ancestor worship and the passage of the souls to the spirit world. The hunters placed a large dog at the entrance so its spirit may guard the threshold between the living and the dead. Neolithic settlements built huge tomb complexes near caves. Some of the most prominent sites were Newgrange in County Meath, Cruachan in County Roscommon and Loch Gur in County Limerick. These liminal spaces allowed the tribes to maintain a connection to the Thonic deities and souls of their ancestors. Dogs were an integral part of the rituals at Bru na Boyne in County Meath for 6,000 years. The pagan priests built a wooden enclosure near the Neolithic tomb at Newgrange in 2000 BC. They sacrificed dogs, cattle, pigs, deer and sheep to the deities of death and the netherworld in the sacred space. The Gaels continued the tradition of interring their chieftains and kings at the ancient royal sites. Bru na Boyne transformed into the royal cemetery of the High Kings of Ireland in pre-Christian times. The Druids ritually deposited hunting dogs in ditches at Newgrange and neighboring Nauth. The large dogs were votive offerings to the deities and souls of the ancestors. Their spirits protected the liminal space between the mortal realm and the underworld. Farming communities in the sea and Bru, or the Boyne Valley, gathered at Newgrange during the Gryenstad and Gymrid, or winter solstice. The forces of the underworld were at their weakest during this time. The rebirth of the sun took place when the rays of the sun filled the passageways of the tomb. Newgrange was the mystical home of the deities of the Tuatha de Danann. The cult of Luff, the Celtic god of light and crafts, flourished among the ancient monuments. Angus, the god of love and youth, was conceived at Newgrange. He was the son of Dagda, the Irish god of agriculture, and Bone, the goddess of the river Boyne. Angus brought the swan maiden care to his otherworldly home at Newgrange. The skeletons of wolfhounds were found at an Iron Age ring fort called Rathnu on the sacred hill of Usneach in County Westmeath. King Tuathil Tekmar built the fortress on the ruins of a sacred Bronze Age enclosure in the 1st century AD. The enclosure served as a communal ritual complex in the province of Meath during the Iron Age. The standing stones, burial mounds and a Neolithic tomb called Patrick's Bed were among the ancient monuments on the hill of Usneach. Their presence attested to the sanctity of the hill over the millennia. The druids cast large hounds and reindeer antlers into a man-made pool called the King's Stables in County Armagh. 
ritual activity took place at the sacred pond between the Late Bronze and Iron Ages. The wolf dogs were probably votive offerings to the deities of hunting and the underworld. The skull of a wolfhound dating to the Late Bronze Age was found at nearby Hawhees Fort. Experts confirm the wolfhound is the largest known dog ever discovered in Ireland. The enormous size of the hound suggested the Irish aristocracy began the selective breeding of hunting dogs during the Bronze Age. The King's Stable served as a ritualistic centre for Hawhees Fort and the settlements in the surrounding countryside. Scholars believe they were also part of the royal ceremonial complex at Emain Macha, or Navan Fort in County Armagh. Emain Macha was the capital of the kings of Ulster in pre-Christian times. The Druids sacrificed a wolfhound at Lees Mullen Henge near the hill of Terra in County Meath during the Iron Age. They buried the remains of the wolf dog in the precincts. The tribes at Lees Mullen built the wooden sanctuary between the 6th and 5th centuries BC. The Neolithic monuments in the area confirmed the religious beliefs of the settlements endured into the Iron Age. Archaeologists discovered an infant surrounded by dog bones at the Wraith Na Rig, or Fort of Kings on the hill of Terra in County Meath. The Druids interred the child with the dogs during the funerary rites in the Iron Age. The dogs protected the sacred space and soul of the infant in the afterlife. The butcher marks on the dog bones at Terra suggested the Druids sacrificed dogs as sacred animals during kingship rituals. The kings of Terra were among the Gaelic royalty who proudly displayed their wolfhounds during important occasions. The tribes noticed wolf dogs at inauguration ceremonies, Druidic rituals, the great feasts and hunting expeditions. The wolfhounds of royalty and the aristocracy would also have been visible during the Enoch. The Druids called an Enoch, or public assembly, to mourn the deaths of Gaelic kings, queens, chief druids and nobles. The pagan rites of the Enoch were also associated with ancestor worship. The Brehan laws stated only kings, chieftains, and the nobility were permitted to own a wolfhound in Ireland. The chief poets of royal courts were also entitled to own two wolfhounds. The Fenian cycle recounted Cormac Mac Aert, the High King of Ireland, kept 300 wolfhounds and 200 pups at his royal residence in Terra during the 3rd century AD. His master of hounds, Finn Mac Cum Hall, or Finn Mac Cool, trained the wolfhounds to hunt and fight alongside the Fianna on the battlefield. Finn Mac Cumhale was the master of two magical hounds called Bran and Seelan. Bran and Seelan, meaning raven and survivor, were the children of Finn's aunt, the goddess Twyron. The fairy Uchtdielb transformed Twyron into a hound with a druid's wand. Twyron gave birth her children, Bran and Seelan, before returning to human form. The otherworldly hounds were famed as the loyal hunting companions of Finn Mac Cum Hale in Irish lore. The fascinating history of Irish wolfhounds is discussed in part two of this series. The Celtic gods and goddesses of Britain, Ireland and Europe are explored in our blog, Legends of Love in Celtic Mythology on WordPress. The woodland deities worshipped in Britain, Ireland and Europe are narrated in Green Man the gods of sacred trees and forests on Amazon.